All right, should we try to do this again? It's My Nerd World, Depeche Mode, the podcast, and we are less than 24 hours away, I think, from hearing the first single from Depeche Mode's Memento Mori. I got a lot to talk about. my nerd world and welcome to it Depeche Mode the podcast I'm your host John Justice going to try to keep it brief in light of tomorrow being a very big day finally as it relates to the best band ever all right listen that's subjective for me they're the best band ever they're the band that's meant the most to me for the vast majority of my life since 19. Uh, 85. So thank you so much for checking out the show and everybody who has emailed talkshownerd at gmail.com, left a comment up on YouTube. I have a lot of listener feedback that I want to go through ahead of tomorrow's big day. And so um, I just really have uh, been really excited and uh, feel blessed at the number of individuals that have found the show as of late and have reached out to me to share their stories. And I'm looking forward to sharing those those stories with you. So we got confirmation on a few things. We've got some reveals taking place. We have a little bit of news to share all ahead of tomorrow's debut of Ghosts Again. And I'll be honest, hearing the snippet as the show started, I'm excited again. I'm putting behind me. We got some listener feedback relating to the frustration that many of us had almost a week ago. Well, a little less than a week ago, I guess, over the uh, countdown to the countdown, and a lot of talk that perhaps um, some mistakes were made or there were some issues and delays taking uh, taking place, especially given the release date of the of the album. So let me let me get through a few items of note. I want to talk a little bit a um, little bit of content as it relates to just the the last few albums worth of Depeche Mode music and the sound and my thoughts on that ahead of hearing the first new music in uh, in six years. I'm actually hoping I was hesitant to, actually, to sit down and start recording the show today because there's a slight chance I might be able to hear Ghosts again today. Um, I work for a cluster of radio stations, so that's all I want to say. So there's a slight possibility I might be able to get a preview of it, and I was kind of waiting to see, well, should I wait to find out? But um, I've got a lot, of, a lot of things going on today, and so I decided, well, you know what? If I, um, if I do have the opportunity to hear it today, I'll, uh, I'll pop back on either my uh, Instagram at uh, the my nerd world. Uh, on my TikTok at the John J O N Justice at the John Justice. Certainly follow me on Twitter at the at the My Nerd World there as well. Um, and I could put up a short uh, on YouTube if you happen to be watching there. Now I put up a short yesterday and I was completely wrong. Um, I got a, I have a couple of uh, individuals with the inside track and uh, some things I wish that I could talk about but I can't uh, because it, uh, just I people have confided in me, but really interesting behind-the-scenes information about the images that got leaked that we talked about um, last week. Uh, the album cover, the back of the album cover, the track list has all been confirmed. I'll go back over it here here again. Um, the official Depeche Mode account did tweet yesterday, but some more billboards went up around the world for promotion of not only Memento Mori, but of Ghosts again. And they also give a release date for the album of March 24th. Now, I was told the album was coming out earlier. I was told it was actually going to be coming out on March 10th. We had originally thought it was coming out on the 17th. I was told it was coming out on the 10th. 
Turns out that it's coming out on the 24th. This is leading a lot of people, and it's becoming irrelevant at this point in time, but this is leading a lot of people to speculate that there was some type of issue and delay, that the single was supposed to come out last week, but they had to push it a week um, along with pushing the album because the album's release date is the day after the first concert. And so... I don't know if that's ever happened with the band before. A lot of people, and I agree, and actually I shared this on the show uh, just recently, are expecting to hear more than one track off the album. We know that Ghosts Again has seven tracks, uh, and uh, we've heard that it's got two B-sides on it that won't be appearing on the album. We also know that there's going to be some, I don't want to say warm-up shows, but appearances by Martin Gore and Dave Gone. Um, specifically on that France television show, as I mentioned last week, and as was shared with me that I shared on the show, uh, one of the listeners to the show is going to be able to go in this particular program. When they have bands on, they usually play larger sets. So I imagine that we'll get something akin to when uh, the band played on David Letterman for the Delta Machine uh, tour. And so we'll probably get a preview of a handful of the tracks and most likely the ones that will get, you know, played live. They won't be playing the entire album live. But I, with a lot of fans, find it really strange that the band's going to be releasing the album the day after the first show. Lucky for the individuals, if you have a chance to go see that first date, which I believe is Sacramento. Uh, actually, Yes, I was indeed correct. The first... Um, the first show on the tour is Sacramento, California on March 23rd. So if you're able to go to that show and not having heard the album yet, I I think that would be something pretty special. Um, I'm assuming it's going to leak between now and then. Um, I'm honestly expecting the album's going to leak this weekend. That's all that I'm going to say. I'm expecting the full album will be released um, this week, and I think it's really just a matter of time. I've heard some, and I've read some comments that uh, the album has popped up on some torrent sites where you can go and download music illegally. We're all going to go download the album anyways. I don't. I that's my personal issue with it. I don't mind hearing an album early, especially from Depeche Mode, specifically from Depeche Mode, because I know that I'm going to be spending plenty of my dollars on Depeche Mode, uh, Depeche Mode content. Uh, that being said, uh, being able to go see the band live and hear tracks from the album before you have a chance, you know, see them perform live before you have a chance to listen to them would be uh, an incredibly unique experience. And I know for me in, you know, of among the 33 times I've seen them live, the first night, especially Music for the Masses, the World Violation Tour, Songs of Faith and Devotion specifically, those tours, as I, you know, first found the band in 85, those tours, I was able to go and watch completely blind as to what the set list was. And I will never forget going to San Jose to see the devotional tour for the first time. And I believe it's where the San, Diego, the, uh, San Jose Sharks right, played. I believe that's where it was. Anyways, indoor arena. And I'll never forget what it was like sitting there, or excuse me, standing there, um, watching the show, the opening of the devotional tour in and of itself. Um, just the, uh, the the thunderous cracks and the, the lightning with the curtain, a long-haired Dave gone in silhouette um, as he sang Higher Love. I mean, just incredible. But every time the next song started, and you had this almost slow reveal because of the change that the band does to the songs live. And then that moment you discover which song it is and just the rush that I would get. I mean, and the same thing occurred to me, I mean, uh, occurred for me on the World Violation Tour. Um, I don't remember much because it was much, it was before that, obviously, of the um, Music for the Masses Tour. Uh, but certainly, that was the case when I went to go see uh, the concert at the Rose Bowl, uh, the 101 show. So being able to go into the show blind, especially not even having heard the music, has got to be just an absolute, an absolutely in, in, incredible 
um, experience. And so I know I've heard from some people that are looking forward to seeing that happen who are actually able to go to the Sacramento show. They also announced that uh, DJ Kelly Lee Owens will be opening up, will be um, the opening act uh, for the first leg of the tour. And Stella Rose, Gon's daughter, will be opening up in New York City. And they made an announcement that new North American dates will be announced soon. Now, hopefully that comes out tomorrow. That's what I've been waiting for because I have not been able to uh, secure my my tickets to any of the shows uh, just uh, just yet. I'm still considering a couple of shows on this first leg, even though I don't have tickets and how much I want to pay. But I'm looking forward to seeing a new set of dates and just praying they come to Minneapolis. I know there's some disappointment. I was... Um, Texting with some Depeche Mode friends of mine yesterday. Uh, some disappointment over seeing Owens uh, DJing that first leg of the of the tour, uh, and and I can I can understand that. You know, I, I don't, it's been a while since um, there's been an opening band for De, for Depeche Mode that I was really into. I f- I became a massive fan of the the during the devotional tour, uh, Knights of Reb, Electronic, uh, of course. Uh, Poe, for a period of time, I became a fan of hers just from seeing her on uh, on tour with them as well. Kelly Lee Owens being a DJ on the first leg of the tour, to me, speaks to the band's desire to bring in new fans. So I imagine that um, younger people, not as familiar with Depeche Mode, but maybe big fans of Kelly Lee Owens may go, well, you know what? I I like some of Depeche Mode's music. They're a famous band, but I definitely want to go see Kelly Lee Owens. Um, They'll certainly have the lighting rig set up for a DJ set like that. Less enthused, but I'm not going to New York City to have seen Stella Rose. I've listened to um, some of her music and just hasn't uh, hasn't done anything for me. So, as always, as I work through the show uh, today in the lead-up to uh, Ghosts Again being released tomorrow, you can drop me an email, talkshownerd at gmail.com, uh, or you can leave a comment up on YouTube as well. And on tomorrow's show, I'll have a full uh, video. I was uh, Today, it was just sort of, again, a shorter show where I wanted to uh, give my thoughts heading into tomorrow's release, having put, again, last week behind me, and uh, share with you the listener feedback. As I mentioned, uh, the track list has all but been confirmed, especially with the confirmation that the album artwork that we've seen of the the the, the two chairs, uh, along with the skull on the table. We've seen some further artwork that actually has Dave and Martin sitting in the chairs from the back of the album art. Also released today uh, was a photo that I used for the YouTube uh, cover. And uh, it is from the video, which I'm looking forward to, the little snippets that we saw, black and white. Anton Corbin directed shows uh, Martin and Dave um, side by side uh, behind what looks or is sitting in front of what looks to be a chess table wearing hoods. Uh, A lot of imagery of skulls in the video seems very dark, very much in line with what we saw on the album cover as well. So let me run through the track list really quick. And I want to make a comment on the album cover artwork, too. So, the Memento Mori track list. Uh, My Cosmos is Mine, Wagging Tongue, Ghosts Again, Don't Say You Love Me, My Favorite Stranger, Soul With Me, Caroline's Monkey, Before We Drown, People Are Good, Always You, Never Let Me Go, uh, and uh, Speak to Me. On the home forum, uh, it's uh, it's been really entertaining to see... Uh, the comments over the track list, especially those that have just been in flat-out denial that this is the track list. Also, uh, just a lot of commentary around Caroline's Monkey. <laughs> I tried to go. I was so bummed out. I tried to go and make a, an at Caroline's Monkey Twitter account, but somebody had grabbed it. So what I did make, and you're going to be the first ones to know. Nobody else knows this. I haven't even done anything with it yet, but I did grab my Cosmos is mine at my Cosmos is mine on Twitter. So uh, if you wanted to go and follow it, I haven't done anything with it yet. I did add the Memento Mori artwork to it, uh, and I think I made a comment about it. As a matter of fact, let me pull it up here really quick on my phone. I forgot what I put as one of the... uh... I really want a Caroline's monkey. I was kicking myself in the head when that first came out because that would have been the that was like the um the perfect my cosmos. Oh wait, I'm gonna go this route. That would have been the perfect uh, Twitter handle. I haven't looked to see if anybody's done anything with it. Oh, that's what I did. All right, so if you go on, if you go on the Twitter, 
uh, at my cosmos is mine. Uh, the title of it is Caroline and her monkey. So, um, I would be tickled if I saw some people started to start following that Twitter that Twitter account. Uh, I mentioned this on last week's episode. My guess is Caroline uh, Caroline's monkey is going to be an instrumental. However, it could be a rather interesting song if it's like a monkey on your back, you know, like Caroline's monkey. That's I'm th- that to me could be rather interesting. But I'm I'm just curious. Doesn't even doesn't describe. Uh, my desire to hear this album, apart from the fact that we, you know, apart from the fact that it's new Depeche Mode, and I'm such a Depeche Mode fan, but, you know, it's been six years, and they've spent a lot of time on this album, and they've been through a lot. So I'm curious to see what they've come up with. Now, before I add a little bit of comment um, to this, um, especially because we're gonna we're gonna hear our first bit of of new Depeche Mode music. Somebody on the um, Halo forum had said they'd already had a chance to hear uh, Ghosts again, and that they uh, they didn't like the last three albums, and they said it sounded like the last three albums. But music, like movies and art, is so subjective. I don't put any sort of emphasis when people go and make and make comments like that. But before, again, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself, and this is going way longer than I expected. So I've had some people reach out to me and make this comment, and I've seen uh, some commentary about this as well. The artwork on the back of the the album sleeve, the two chairs with the table and the skull, and especially now seeing Martin and Dave there with the skull on the table in between them and people that that are feeling like it's insensitive because of the passing of, of Andrew Fletcher. And everyone's entitled to their opinion. Art is subjective, too. I have to believe that Martin and Dave wouldn't have done anything that they felt um, Fletch would have been offended by. Now, I'm not personally offended by it. I didn't even really give it much of a second thought when I saw the imagery. When I first saw it without Martin and Dave sitting in the chairs, when I saw it with Martin and Dave sitting in the chairs, I didn't really give it a second thought given the title of the album, Memento Mori. I was watching, you know, Remember You Must Die. I was watching another interview with Martin Gore that I hadn't seen post the Berlin press conference. And Martin had reiterated how there's a lot of songs about death on the record. And they had done that before the passing of, of Fletch. The imagery to me makes sense. Uh, the angel wings, which I believe is like a funeral arrangement, if I'm not mistaken, um, in the artwork that we've seen for the album cover. Um, again, the title of the album uh, what we the little snippet that we saw of the video that we'll get yesterday. I mean, this all seems to have a very, uh, you know, death seems to be a central theme in this. And and again, I'll just reiterate that um, if Fletch would have been offended by any of this, I imagine the band wouldn't have wouldn't have done it. And it might even be somewhat cathartic for for the both of them. Uh, as I mentioned on previous episodes, I lost my my best friend while I was recuperating in the hospital for my third open heart surgery um, in June of of last year, uh, I still have to go into the studio that we worked together um, in uh, on a daily basis and do my job. I'm sitting in the chair now that he sat in. And it's weird. I had to log into my computer at work using his name. Um, because there's things that I have that that I that he used to do that I now do because I'm I'm hosting the hosting the show. So, um, it, it just death is a death is a weird and strange thing, and people deal with it in in different in different ways. And um, I've mentioned before, and I have some some listener feedback that um speaks to this as well of people that are looking forward to this album uh, because of what they've dealt with in their own, in their own life. And, and I imagine that the record in and of itself, even though they have, they chose this title before Fletch passed away, um, is going to be very, very meaningful and has become very meaningful for the both of them having lost Fletch. Um, and you know, one of their best friends for almost their entire lives. 
So one more quick thing I wanted to share, and then let's get into some listener feedback. Um, I want to talk a bit about the complaints that I see quite often about the the Electro Blues sound that Depeche has and comments that they've been stuck in a, in a rut. Again, it's all subjective. Uh, I had somebody uh, message me that they, they think the last five albums have all sucked and they don't expect anything different from this album having been a fan of all the stuff prior to that. And that's certainly their opinion and they are entitled, uh, entitled to it. Um, for me personally, I've been hot and cold on a lot of the new stuff. Interesting as of late, though, I've really began to enjoy songs, and I've said this before, I've really began to enjoy songs that I didn't enjoy before, and I don't know if it's just because I've had some distance from them, if my expectations have been so high listening to these to these albums before, but you know, Delta Machine was not a record that was really high on my list, but listening to it lately, and I've really begun to enjoy it, songs that I never felt a connection to before I'm suddenly listening to um, with frequency. Jezebel off of Sounds of the Universe. I suddenly struck this chord with me, and I and I find myself listening to that song much more often than I ever did before. So listening to a lot of the Depeche Mode from Ultra onward, in my opinion, the albums are each an eclectic mix within the the DM, the Depeche Mode box of sound that they work in. The albums themselves have songs that really do range in style. When you look at, when you listen to Sounds of the Universe, it kind of has more in common with Exciter and is a far cry from Spirit. And while Playing the Angel may have a similar sort of blues electronic vibe as, say, Delta Machine, you can immediately tell the difference between the songs specific to each album. And then you have the songs within the albums. It's one of the things that I appreciated early on, like finding music for the masses and hearing a song like Strange Love, but then coupled with Pimp or To Have and To Hold. Um, The level of consistency in changing up styles is apparent even within the album. Um, This is not the best example, but going back to, to... Songs of Faith and Devotion, One Caress, the all-strings composition of One Caress compared to anything else on Songs of Faith and Devotion. Um, in my opinion, Exciter has was really always more of a follow-up to Violator than Ultra was. But even then, you know, Exciter was very indicative of the drum and bass um, the electronic music, the techno during that early 2000, 2001 time frame. I'm struck by tracks like My Little Universe off of Delta Machine compared to any other track on that record. And I personally think it's a testament to the band's longevity and constant discovery by younger fans. Depeche Mode always sounds like Depeche Mode, but they rarely bore, in my opinion for as much as fans may want to nitpick. And a lot of that has to do with the people behind the scenes. You go back to Gareth Jones, Daniel Miller, Francois, you know, Francois Kevorkian, Flood, Mark Bell, James Ford, Ben Hillier, Tim Simenon. They all brought their own production styles and pushed the band some more than others. I mentioned on, um, you know, on Spirit, not, and Spirit's probably low on my list of the, of the last several, records uh, mostly because of the lyrical content it just wasn't anything that I really gravitated uh, towards apart from a few key tracks Poison Heart being one of them um, ended up falling in love over time with The Worst Crime I'm excited for the little bit that we've heard of Ghosts Again but for what James Ford did in terms of production on Spirit because I I love the production on Spirit I think that the the vocal processing they did with Dave was really unique, and I'm curious if they do the same thing here. Uh, I know we have the other producer on the album as well, but I'm I'm excited. Listening to Spirit yesterday, I'm excited to see what James Ford um, has to offer with this uh, with this album, and we'll certainly get a better understanding of that with with Ghosts again. Uh, but again, hearing that little snippet, I'm just really excited to hear that record. All right. Let's go ahead and get to uh, some <laughs> listener feedback before I start blabbering on uh, longer than I uh, said I was going to. 
Oops, I'm sorry. Hold on a second. This is me when I do it live and I had the volume turned down. Let's try that again. All right. First one comes from friend of the show, Rome Ed. So he writes, so it looks like Memento Mori is coming out March 24th now. Ha. <laughs> if that's true, then this is going to be the first time I'm not. I, this is the first time I'm seeing them in concert when I will not sing along. I'm going on March 25th. Oh, wow. So he's going. So that would be the um, San Jose show. I should come out. I should come out and see that show. That's my biggest issue with these shows. They're happening. Like, I'd love to go out. I have my entire family's out in Los Angeles. I'd love to go see them in Los Angeles, but it's happening on a Tuesday night. I go down to Chicago, but it's happening on a Wednesday night. Vegas is the one that I've been eyeing. We'll see if that shakes out. Thank you, Rome. I appreciate the uh, the email. Paul Rodriguez writes, um, I, love the, I love the new sound with Ghost again, but Dave always has awesome vocals. I'm so excited and can't wait for the album to be released and even more excited when they come to Los Angeles, California. I'm 61 years old and I've been a fan since they first came here and played the Rose Bowl. Love them since. Thanks for your podcast, Paul Ramirez. Wow, you got me beat at being 50, Paul. Thank you so much uh, for the uh, for the message. Uh, next comes from Jay. Jay writes, I came across your YouTube channel today. I was hooked. I'm going to be 48 this year. I've been a massive Modi since 87. I've been going through your show's back catalog all day in between clients, and I love your perspectives and takes. Thank you. I always wonder if people are going to be that interested in my blabbing on about this band. You ask us for ideas and such, and while you may have done a show on them, what about uh, Depeche Mode's demos? Official ones, non-official. I always find talking about them as interesting, especially the ones from around uh, the Violator and Songs of Faith and Devotion era. The same with the samples that have been used. I just recently came across the knowledge that a sample of Fleetwood Mac's uh, cover of Black Magic Woman is prominent in World in My Eyes, along with Fad Gadget sample, along with the Fad Gadget sample. Again, love your show, and I look forward to hearing more. Take care, Jay. You know, I didn't realize that they had sampled um, Led Zeppelin for Never Let Me Down Again. And it's interesting on the demos, and that's something that I've definitely considered uh, doing a show on, a show or two on in the uh, in the future. But how completed the demos were, especially during the uh, Music for the Masses, Violator Songs of Faith and Devotion era, you go back and listen to those demos and you will find that they're pretty close apart from the expansive production work they're pretty close to the finished product and the band had actually asked martin over time to kind of strip the demos back so that they can work and build them up more because they came in so completed in the uh in the past i finally picked up monument by the way and that book is a must-have for any depeche mode fan the comprehensive work that was done in that book on on the beginning of the band up until Spirit is nothing short of miraculous. I've I've listened to every documentary, official documentary for for sure. I have uh, listened to plenty of unofficial documentaries. Uh, read some books as well. The Monument um, has information in there and things that I had never ever been aware of, and I've only um, I've only just begun to scratch the surface. Uh, it's going to take me a while to read through that. Definitely go and pick that up. All right. Uh, let's get to uh, Annie. Uh, Annie writes in, discovered your pod a few months back. Absolutely love it. Thank you very much, Annie. I appreciate that. And thank you for the email. Uh, my DM obsession and quite possibly a midlife crisis symptoms symptom was reignited last summer when I saw a short Instagram clip of Dave performing Enjoy the silence a few years back. While I'd always admired the band, I had not closely followed their work since the Songs of Faith and Devotion days. But all autumn, up to this moment, I've been, I've been revisiting the albums I once cherished while rediscovering most of the catalog I never listened to. I read the book Stripped, watched 101, unbelievably for the first time, and any documentary footage I could find on YouTube. While I don't have an epic DM concert story, I'll be seeing them in Chicago in April for the first and maybe last time. I've been surprised at how listening to DM has effectively tapped into very specific emotions and sense memories from my youth, thrilled at how beautifully their music has held us through the decades, and amazed to realize how much DM has set the blueprint 
for much of the other music that I love. I wish I could remember precisely how I discovered DM, but I'm 95% sure it was in 1989. I was in the eighth grade, and I heard Never Let Me Down Again somewhere, but where I was somewhat sheltered as a 13-year-old kid. My parents never allowed cable in the house, and thus no MTV. We had no VCR and no music magazines. My older siblings had other musical tastes, and there was no college radio in my North Carolina town. A friend was the likely source because, in short, my in short order, my acquaintance Lisa had loaned me both music for the masses and catching up with Depeche Mode. I was both hooked and primed for Violator, which was, of course, released a short time later in 1990. And that's something I got to get into. Man, I miss the days when the band was putting out an album like every year, every two years. I just I, when I go back and look at the time frame of the releases from the albums up until like Songs of Faith and Devotion, it really is astonishing the amount of music that they were putting out in short periods of time relative to how music is made and how long we have to wait between records now. She goes on to say, as serendipity would have it, that year my adult brother moved back in with us for a time and sweet. Jesus installed cable TV in his bedroom. I spent hours in there glued to MTV, transfixed on Anton's videos and eagerly awaiting the next release. I knew nothing of the history, biography, or inner dynamics of the band at that time, but I loved the music and it helped me through high school. While I may have had a few friends who also listened to DM, it always felt like something I had discovered on my very own in a relationship that I held somewhat privately. That was one of the amazing things, by the way. Um, especially going back to to high school and uh, going back. Well, actually, that would have been uh, right out of high school. Uh, but seeing, like, after the uh, World Violation Tour, I saw it a bit when I was still in high school after Music for the Masses and seeing people wearing Depeche Mode shirts, but then seeing World Violation T-shirts everywhere. Um, it was just such a, you know, just it was such a unique. They were, like, part, you're part of the club, right? By the time Ultra rolled around, I had moved to New York City and was exploring other musical interests, mostly underground hip-hop and obscure electronica. My love for DM rem uh, remained, but uh, sat on the back burner for many, many years. Somehow, about, uh, but something about now being 46 years old, co uh, combined with the tumult, unease, and isolation the last few years, led me back to Depeche Mode. They have been a true joy and comfort to me this last year. I feel a huge regret that I never saw them in my younger years, but take great pride that my small children, four and seven, both love Depeche Mode and have their favorite songs that they ask for daily, to the point where they have nearly ruined Violator for me, still trying to get them to those B-sides. It ha it's also been fun to actually learn about the band because there was so much I never knew, and it's been a weird shock to my system to see Depeche Mode as older individuals, they had somehow been internally preserved as 30-year-old lads in my mind, which seems only to serve as a reminder of my own mortality and both the speed and slippage of time. It's been a very untethering and disconcerting feeling, honestly. Yep, I know how you feel. Your pod has been a great uh, resource and guide as I continue to explore some of the later albums. I really can't thank you enough. Thank you for that. Wow. Although I'm curious if you ever did the Alan Wilder episode. No, I didn't, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Today's countdown and uh, to the, the today's countdown to the countdown was indeed disappointing. But on we go. Look forward uh, to more episodes and truly hope all is well in your nerd world and health. Sorry for the long read. No, absolutely. Um, I I greatly appreciate it. Uh, all the best, uh, Annie. So, thank you so much uh, for that, Annie. I really really do appreciate it. So I'm gonna. Pause this. You won't know because I'm going to come right back. Something just popped up. All right. I have in my hands the entire lyrics for Ghosts Again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish with the listener feedback. And then right at the end of the podcast, I'm going to share with you the Ghosts Again lyrics. I'm going to do that in case you want to skip it and don't want to hear it. So I'm going to go through the rest of the listener feedback, and then I will share with you the lyrics to uh, Ghosts Again that just popped up in the middle of the podcast. All right, next we go to Matthew. In the last few years, I have lost both of my parents unexpectedly. I'm only in my 30s, so I'm quite young to have this, uh, to have this had happened. 
Depeche Mode and Dave Gaughan's music have been paramount to my healing and processing during this time. Um, Matthew, wow, that's that's really is an incredible, and I'm going to be, uh, and I'm sorry to hear about your loss, and uh, I'm definitely uh, going to be in touch with you because uh, I'd love to bring you on the show and talk a little bit about that because I think um, I think that would be good for a lot of people uh, to for you to share your story. So thank you for sharing this little bit with me and with us. And I'll definitely be in touch about potentially getting you on the show. Uh, thank you so much. All right. Uh, let's go to a beach who writes, I'm going to survive. Crap PR move for sure. I don't think Dave's going to care personally. Fletch would have would be on top of it. Uh, I will be watching for remixes, bass boosts especially. I'm not going to drop cash until I hear it top to bottom. I'm being more demanding now because we have been given not ideal music or just one or two good songs on more recent albums. I've had access to the albums via relatives in the UK uh, at the start. So, yes, I have been there with Yaz before they set foot here in North America. So thank you for that. Cyril writes, I wonder if there will be any deluxe editions with bonus tracks. It was disappointing to have an album spirit with no real B-sides and bonus tracks. Granted, they did have the deluxe edi- edition with the remixes, and they threw in the Highline version of Heroes and the Japanese version, but DM always had great B-sides bonus tracks. So, well, here's hoping. Uh, I thought that... Now, I remember a, a quote from Martin talking about an extended box set deal, but I don't know if that... Honestly, I've watched so many documentaries of this band, I don't know if it was about this or if that was an interview done that was about you know uh delta machine or sounds of the universe because sounds of the universe was the last time we got a massive box set and i mentioned that last week i pulled that out recently and that was just incredible um so i don't know cyril we'll find out i know we do have b-sides for this album but i don't know specifically um you know whether or not we're going to uh, we're going to uh get sort of a deluxe version uh next we have a minnesota native uh, jim udenberg hope i said that right jim Found your podcast on YouTube, looking for some reactions to the DM countdown fiasco. You're focusing on my two favorite things, Star Wars and Depeche Mode. Yes. Finally. Somebody who There's a T shirt. There's a there's a there's a Depeche Mode themed shirt where they have the band members dressed up as members, you know, as characters from Star Wars. I've never gotten it. I, I'm not big on parodies like that, but I'm glad that somebody finally put the two together. I became obsessed with DM in the summer of 88 when I heard Strange Love uh, played at an outdoor barbecue in Louisiana. And, of course, Star Wars changed my life when I was six. Uh, My career is thanks to Star Wars. I'm a makeup effects artist. Wow, that's cool. Anyway, I have nothing specific to say or comment, but I'm excited to find your podcast and to meet a fellow Star Wars DM pop culture nerd. Well, uh, thank you, Jim. And uh, you can always check out my show on uh, Twin Cities uh, News Talk. Uh, if that happens to be your cup of tea, if not, then I hope you just enjoy my Star Wars and Depeche Mode podcast because my weekly radio show is definitely not for everybody, but don't hold it against me. All right. I'm a news talk host, so that doesn't sit well with a lot of people. What can I say? We have fans and friends of the show. Friends of the show are the people that like the show and like what I have to say, and fans of the show are people that listen every day but do not like what I have to say. That which I do not get into on the Star Wars or... De- definitely not the Depeche Mode podcast. David Thiefolt writes, The Sound of the Universe is definitely an underrated album. Yes, I totally agree. Um, Kilraynor68, who's followed me on Twitter, thank you very much for that. Love your podcast. Been a DM fan since 1980. You got me beat. Can't wait for Memento Mori. I'm from Belgium, Belgium by the way. Man, I love the fact that there are so many people from overseas. As a matter of fact, I have somebody from Bulgaria whose name I can't pronounce because it's I don't know how to pronounce that. Next, we talk to Clemens uh, Zagroski. If I said that wrong, I apologize. Who's also uh, followed me on Instagram and Twitter and said some very nice things. Thank you to express your frustration in in such a hilarious way. I love pain and suffering in various countdowns and the maybe they forgot the snare in the final mix. That's a relief. Thank you, uh, uh, Clements. I think I'm getting that right. Next, we have the name I can't pronounce, and I apologize. 
Uh, hello there. Big fan of, of uh, Depeche Mode since 2003 when I was 10. I'm a new generation fan, I would say, that the old fans are just whining too much. Uh, first, Depeche Mode albums after 97 are all unique and they have their beauty. I agree. Second, no, I don't need Alan Wilder. Nice. Third, you can't judge songs by only their titles. Totally agree. Right up my alley. He who's from Bel- uh, from Bulgaria. <laughs> I'm assuming it's a he. I didn't mean to pick up gender there. Uh, Please, people, wait for the actual album. Maybe the songs would make sense. Maybe not. But just stop whining about everything. P.S. Thank you for your great podcast. Cheers from Bulgaria. Thank you so much. And please, um, if you hear this, feel free to write back. And I'd, I'd love to know how to say your name. Tim Smith writes, did you send in for the free cassette after the failed warehouse signing? I still have mine. I had a copy of that cassette from the violator signing in Hollywood that I did not get a chance to attend. Unfortunately, I do not have it anymore. I think I'd gotten one from a friend of mine. I didn't personally send in for it. I felt like I shouldn't because I didn't go. I know that sounds weird, but I didn't feel right to me to send for one in because I didn't go. See what I said? I was going to do a short episode, and it's 41 minutes long now. Watch, tomorrow's going to be like 15 minutes of me talking about ghosts again. All right, two more. <laughs> so glad I found your podcast on YouTube. Uh, blessed that you read some of my posts, writes Jay. On DepecheMode.de, someone posted who each track belongs to. The opener is alleged to be an instrumental, and there are three Martin tracks. I heard that was the other way around, anyway, uh, by the way. I heard there was actually three uh, Dave Gone tracks. I guess we'll find out. Yesterday's debacle, there was a frustration that nothing happened when the counter hit zero. If it revealed artwork, I would have been okay or a link to a new release page on their website. And uh, there's nothing on their website. Instead, I was left scratching my head, and I had to go hunting to find the purpose of yesterday. By the way, I've been commenting on your YouTube stream as Tokyo Skyline, my recording artist name. Thank you, Tokyo Skyline. And if you need some Depeche Mode type music for your broadcast, I write my own music. Hopefully in the same vein as DM, I can send you snippets of tracks if you are interested. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would love to hear some snippets. Uh, Michael Tennant, who I mentioned uh, people should go find. Somebody actually went and uh, and did and uh, really enjoyed the music. So I thought that was awesome. All right. Last comes from uh, my friend of the show, Stephanie from Germany, who says this. I'm going to give my opinion on the artwork, and I know I'm going to make some enemies among Depeche Mode fans. I don't think so. People are entitled to their opinions. After I saw those two angel wings for the first time, I had to swallow, as well as with the supposed backside of the album. I am aware of what Memento Mori means and that the music is not happy party music, and I love it for that, but the artwork depresses me and reminds me too much of funerals. Of course, I know that we... Also have the terrible loss of Fletch to thank for that. Nevertheless, I admire Anton Corbin and his creative genius for the visual impact of the band. I told you recently about the book DMAC, and it's great. Every page is so much fun to look at. Yeah, I really want to get that Anton Corbin Depeche Mode book, but it's just uh, I dropped my money right now on on a Monument, and uh, that one was a little bit too expensive to get past uh, the wife. So... Uh, uh, that's it for me today. I hope you are well. As I said, I apologize. Don't apologize for my controversial opinion. You're not the only one. I had people that were texting me the same thing, and everybody's entitled to their opinion. Many love greetings from Germany, Stephanie. All right. So before I wrap up the show, as I said before, I do have, and I haven't read these yet. I'm looking at them on my phone right now. I do have uh, the entire lyrics for Ghosts again. So for those that don't want to hear it, thank you so much for checking out the show this week. I hope if... Uh, you want to support my nerd world and what I do, and you like to read science fiction, uh, that you'll treat yourself a friend or a family member with uh, sci-fi that I have written uh, my Embark science fiction space opera series. Uh, It's filled with a lot of direct and indirect Depeche Mode references. As a matter of fact, book four, which is a standalone survival adventure book, is called Gone Corbin and the Asteroid of Misfortune. So I hope you'll go to MyNerdWorld.net and check out my book series. Uh, If you uh, like to read sci-fi and you want to support the show, uh, you can also go to Amazon.com and search under John J. Owen Justice and check out my books there. Uh, Ebook, paperback, audiobook, and a hard uh, cover. 
um, all available and uh, good prices too. I, I really tried to discount them as much as I possibly could. So for those that want to know the lyrics for Ghosts again, here you go. I'm having a hard time not singing these. I'm looking at them right now, and I kind of want to hum the song. But Wasted feelings, broken meanings. Time is fleeting, see what it brings. Hellos, goodbyes, a thousand midnights, lost in sleepers, lullabies. Heaven's dreaming, thoughtless thoughts, my friends. We know we'll be ghosts again. Sundays shining, silver linings, weightless hours, all my flowers. A place to hide the tears you cried. Everybody says goodbye. Faith is sleeping. Lovers in the air. Might be love is in the air. There's a couple of typos in this. Might be love is in the air. Whisper will be ghosts again. Heaven's dreaming. Thoughtless thoughts, my friends. We know will be ghosts again. Faith is sleeping. Lovers in the air. Whisper will be ghosts again. Written by Martin Gore. So I was wrong. I thought it was a Dave Gone track. That wraps up uh, the show uh, this week. Well, not this week. I'm sorry. That wraps up the show today. That was supposed to be short. 46 minutes later. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow. So be sure to like and subscribe if you're watching or listening on YouTube and wherever uh, you listen to the podcast. Subscribe and don't miss an episode. Looking forward to the uh, these next 24, less than 24 hours to go by. Until then, have yourself a, a fantastic rest of your day. Bye.